So I have the camera here. I have the camera. Let's try it. <laughs> hey guys, Omar here. Fujifilm just announced all this great stuff, but unlike last time where we got to play with the Fujifilm XS10, we didn't get the cameras beforehand. So I can only hold this fake one here <laughs> to go over. Okay, the Fujifilm XE4 is in the genre of my favorite Fujifilm style camera, which is a small little pocketable street thing that you can take everywhere with you, like this Fujifilm X-T20 with the 27 millimeter 2.8. We'll get to that because they just announced a new version of this lens. Now, design-wise, the theme here is gonna be simple and clean. You're gonna see that over and over again. On the front here, we just have a single dial on the front, and gone from the front is the little focus mode dial. Single, manual, continuous is not on the front. So very clean on the front. There isn't a function button on the front. So all you have is the XE4 and a little dial on the front. Now it still has the beautiful styling that Fujifilm has. So it looks like a Fujifilm, you know, X100 series camera. And this is a great choice, I think, for someone that likes the X100 series, but doesn't wanna be pigeonholed into only having a 23 millimeter fixed lens on the front. Here you can buy a tiny pancake lens, but also have the option to put a zoom on there or to put, you know, a different kind of prime, the 56 millimeter 1.2. So it's nice to have that option. On the back, we have the articulating screen, and this is one of the most exciting features. I love that the screen still tilts upward for photography. This is the best feature when you're walking around and doing street photography is for the screen, for you to, able to, look, for you to be able to look down, but also the fact that it pulls out and comes forward just like the Sony a6400, so that you can maybe film yourself really quickly uh, or just take a little bit of video of yourself or even a photo. Now there is no image stabilization, so if you are vlogging, I can see myself vlogging with it, but maybe having it on a little tripod and putting it down, not really walking around with it. Of course, since it's an interchangeable camera, you can put a lens that has image stabilization on there. And this is reminiscent of one of Fujifilm's older cameras, uh, the X70, which I wish they would update. I wish they would go to the X80, X90, bring back a tiny little uh, camera with a flip-up screen, no EVF, that would be awesome. The top is beautiful. It has a clean retro sort of rangefinder top. I like the cameras that have a flat top. If you notice, one of my favorite cameras, the X-T20, has a dial on the top. To lit the top of the, come on, focus. If you notice my X-T20, it's a little busy on the top. There's a lot of dials, there's this big hump. So the rangefinder style of camera is really clean and nice. Again, that is the theme. So I do like it. The Q menu is now on the top and there is one function button on the top. I always like to set that front function button as a playback so that you can, you know, just with one hand play back there. I noticed that the eyelets for the strap are no longer these tiny ones. They seem to be a little bigger, maybe easier to work with. We have the same great shutter. It's good that they're not going to like a traditional, uh, you know, more of a like a DSLR shutter, which the X um, S10 has. I'm not a super fan of that kind of shutter. I like this so that you can put a shutter, a little shutter button on the top to make it look retro-y there. So I'm glad they stuck with that shutter button. There is no ISO dial on the top. There is a shutter dial and gone is the auto switch. So the auto switch, which um, is one of my favorite features of the X-T20, X-T30. It's just a great way to switch the camera into auto. Uh, this, this acts the same way. You just need to change it to P, program mode, and it will be in full auto. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I think it's, you know, if you're on a shutter speed that's, you know, halfway around the wheel on the other side, then to get to program, you have to, you have to look is one of the things. And that's one of the benefits of the auto switch is you can, not even looking, switch that auto switch and hand the camera to someone. Or if you need to take a quick grab at something's happening and your camera's not set up, the, the auto switch is a quicker way to grab a photo or grab video. So I don't know how I feel about the program. 
Um, I understand why they did it in our meeting that we had with Fujifilm. Um, they mentioned that, you know, the auto switch is confusing for people because they don't know why they don't have all the film simulations available to them. They don't know why they didn't get any raw files. So it's kind of cool that they're trying to idiot proof the camera. Uh, so uh, I don't love it, but I understand it. Look at this, guys. Look at this. And probably the hardest decision is going to be which color is better. And oh, I love the matte black. That looks so good. <laughs> so here's the silver. I mean, let me know in the comments which one you're going to pick. Tell me below. Silver or black? Silver. The silver has the Fujifilm X100 look, which I love. The only issue is the lens that looks best on it is black. I wish they would have come out with a silver version to really fool everyone and make you think that you have an X100 camera. So the back again, simple and clean. And one of the things you'll notice right away is that the rear dial is gone. And so the thought process here from Fujifilm is that uh, they wanted more room for your thumb, uh, you know, and that's okay, but I mean, my thumb still rests on top of the wheel. I don't feel like I ever bump the rear wheel. I probably brush up against it a little bit, but I never bump it or turn it accidentally. For me, it has a beautiful clean look. Uh, functionality wise though, the rear dial is really nice to have. I don't think I'll mind too much if the front dial can do everything that the rear, rear dial can. Because right now the front dial on the Fujifilm <laughs> X-T20 is pretty useless. Um, it's more useful in the newer cameras, but... So that's something to get used to is if you're gonna push into focus, which is something that the dial does on the rear, you're gonna have to push in with the back and then turn. I'm sure you can program it to be an ISO dial, so that might be nice, push in for ISO. And sometimes the functionality is you can push the dial to do different things, and that might be helpful. So the rear dial, it's sad to see it go, but again, the theme here is clean, clean lines. We have a display back button. We also have a menu button. The play button is in an awkward place. Uh, hopefully we can reprogram that to be something else. And we have the usual drive button, which is also the delete button. That's interesting. We have a viewfinder that's the same as the Fujifilm XS10. That's fine. You know, uh, these cameras that are smaller and cheaper, the EVF is always a trade-off. I find that on my Fujifilm X-T20, I don't really even use the EVF anymore. Honestly, I'm holding the camera out and uh, just taking a quick shot looking at the screen. If I shoot my X-T3, I'm all about that viewfinder, man, because the experience is wonderful with the X-T3. These guys, it's small, it's cramped, there's no eye cup. Um, but it's good that it's there in case it's really sunny out, you still have that. Or if you want to be super stealthy, you know, you can play back your uh, naughty images. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Going back to the screen, the screen is also designed like the Fujifilm X100. So I like that too, that it's streamlined. One, I, one of my complaints about the X-E2 is that it didn't have a flip up screen and that was to keep the camera nice and clean. And they were able to do that here. Give us a flip screen with still keeping that look. And they did it with the X100 series too. And I was really happy that they did it with this camera, especially the flip up, man, that's awesome. There's a little um, a joystick. It seems like it's an, it kind of a little bit of an awkward position, but it's good to have a joystick instead of not a joystick. It also has a touch screen, but unless they've, you know, improved the touch screen, the touch experience on the Fujifilm cameras is still not there. Uh, you know, where it's just really responsive, just like a phone or a Canon camera. Sometimes it's a little clunky, but uh, you're going to have to use the swipe features if you want to have like your film simulations available and maybe your, <laughs> well, set your white balance inst instead of diving into the menu. You do have a quick menu as well. The position of the joystick to me seems a little low. This was uh, the case in another camera. I can't remember which one it was, but um, the low, it prevents that, that joystick from being programmed into being a back button focus. And in our presentation, they actually labeled that as a possible back button, AF button. Button, did I say button enough? Button, from New Jersey, we say button, button. <laughs> the buttons at the top look like they're nice and flush and designed well. 
perfect symmetry here on the three. We're gonna have to see if it lines up with function. I mean, all these cameras you get used to as you use them more. And the Sony a7C, for example, had less customizable buttons and dials and things. And I enjoyed shooting that camera uh, immensely. So there is something to be said about simplicity. Maybe you're walking around and just doing snaps and street photography. You don't need all kinds of function. You're not changing your film simulation. You're not changing your ISO too much because you're shooting auto ISO, that kind of thing. So clean lines, looks beautiful. Let's see how functional it is. I'll have to hold on that until I get to use it a little bit more. Here's what they look like from the bottom. And we still have the same issue where if you put a tripod plate, it blocks the battery door. But listen, this camera is a street photography snap. It's in your pocket. It's in your jacket. You got no tripod plate on this thing. What's wrong with you? Look at that, guys. Look, look, look. Ooh, ooh. It's pretty. You know you want it. Look at you. You're like drooling over there. <laughs> it is gorgeous. And this is what I mean, the simplicity. We lost the dial on the front. We don't have a dial, no function buttons, but I think that looks gorgeous. Now it looks gorgeous because it's got the 27 millimeter, the most beautiful little pancake lens you've ever seen. But as soon as you put a honkin, what's gonna happen when you put a honkin on there, huh? When you got a little honkin lens sticking out, it's not gonna be as cute. Okay, so that's something to think about. Now the camera ships with accessories. Now I could just see the board meeting camera conspiracies <laughs> on this camera's ergonomics. It seems like Fuji did a preempted strike knowing that that would be one of the complaints is the ergonomics of some of these smaller cameras is tough. And this one is a complete ice cream bar, like really clean. There's no little hump, which we used to have on the X-T X-E3. Now, what about the Fujifilm X100 series versus the X-E3? The X100 has its own beautiful charm and design and a great fixed lens that you are forced to shoot, which is the benefit of a prime lens that it forces you to shoot all in one focal length. But for those of you that don't want to be forced into having a fixed lens, you can get the pancake lens, keep your kit small, and then have that option to have an interchangeable lens. All right, let's talk a little bit about X-E3 versus the X-E4. And again, if you see what we're talking about here, you can see the X-E3 has the, you know, the focus modes on there, and it also has a little bit of a grip. Okay, I'm looking at both of them here. I had like a thought and then I changed my thought. My first thought was the X-E3, of course, I like that camera, um, but it, if you look at the design, like the X-E3 is beautiful, but the X-E4 is even more beautifuler. <laughs> so if you are an X-E3 owner, you don't need to upgrade, of course, but you probably want to. The X-E4's design is beautiful. You're just gonna have to say goodbye to the focus mode dial in the front. And then if we compare the back of the cameras here, the joystick is higher up on the X-E3, uh, XE and there's three function buttons with the play button being in a little more convenient spot. You lost a lot of buttons. Now, Fujifilm also announced the 27 millimeter. I happen to have it right here, guys. I have it right here. It's huge. <laughs> 27 millimeter, 2.8. It's now weather sealed and has an aperture ring, which looks beautiful. The optics are totally the same with the old version and it is weather sealed. So it's a little strange. The lens is weather sealed, but the camera is not that weather sealed, the X-E4. So that Weather sealed lens probably makes more sense on something like the X-T4, X-T3, X-T2, which are weather sealed a little bit better. Um, so you're getting, if you, what's cool is that this 27 millimeter 2.8 comes in a kit and it only costs you like maybe 200 bucks more. So that is a great deal if you pick up the X-E4 with the 27 millimeter, if you don't own this lens, it's like a 40 millimeter equivalent which is like what your eye kind of sees. Now, the way I usually shoot the old version is I set my aperture and kind of park it there. So an aperture ring is nice to have, but the way I shoot this 
I don't really need an aperture ring the way I shoot my 27 millimeter. Now look at this guys, look at this. This is what that weather sealed, beautiful 27 millimeter looks like on the XS10. Yo, that makes the XS10 be like a nice little street vibe camera. Look at that. Personally, I'm still mourning the removal of the D-pad from like a lot of the smaller cameras. You know, so I'm still like a D-pad person. I don't, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind a little, get rid of the Q, look, look. Redesign the X-T20, get rid of the Q and put a little joystick there, done, it's done. <laughs> All right guys, I'll see you next time.